Hello everyone, this is Matteo and today we are going to talk about image variations. The one thing I'm asked more frequently is how to make small variation on an image. This is a rather basic topic but it is still very important so I guess it's well worth a video. So there are dozens of ways to make variations and no silver bullet. Let's start from the easy ones and increase complexity while we go. This time I'm working with SDXL. This is a very bare-bone workflow. I'm using the SDXL clip text encode nodes. And the only thing to note is that I set the text encoder width and height to four times the latent size. This is because I noticed that a higher conditioning resolution tends to give slightly better results. Let me show you. I'm going to copy all these nodes and with Control shift v I get the nodes with all the pipe connections ready. I'm converting the seed to an input, so I have the same for all samplers. Then on the text encoders, I'm setting a lower resolution and we are ready to generate. As you can see on the lower part, I get far less details and also the earrings are less defined. Uh, let me try another seed. Here the body and the dress is much better on the left. But anyway, you usually get sharper details, so why not? Let me delete these nodes and get back on topic. I'm copying all these nodes and tidy up the workflow a little. So the easiest trick to get small variation is to add a very low weight token to the prompt. For example, I can add just a comma at the end of the positive and the image will change a little. And now the eyes are closed. We can also try with an underscore, yeah, I like this one. Or we can try with some random numbers like 8, 4, 8, 3. And the interesting thing is that you can keep adding digits to get a different result each time. Okay, I like the one with the underscore, so let's use that. The same of course applies to the negative prompt. We can use a blank token like before. But with the negatives, there's a thing I always like to try if I want a very clean result. It's what I call the horror negatives. Let me show you. The one word that usually has the best result is simply horror. It's basically a beautifier, and if you need a pleasant, smooth result, horror is always worth a try. The interesting thing is that we have a full array of horrors we can try. Another good one is Frankenstein, Werewolf, Vampire, and of course, Zombie. Okay, I think I like Vampire the most. Now let me prepare for the next step. I'm copying these nodes and this image will be the base for all our future generations. So sometimes you want to keep the same composition but in a different style or maybe just change a detail without doing a full in-paint process. To do that we use conditioning concat. I create a new text prompt with its encoder and use it to define the new properties of the image. I'm using concat instead of modifying the original prompt because uh, this way I have two separate vectors and the tokens blur less between the two. Also, this workflow gives you more flexibility as you can change just the second prompt without touching the original. Since this looks already a bit like Klimt, let me try with painting in the style of Gustav Klimt. So in this case, the order of the conditioning matters. If I want the style to have lower influence, I put it in the conditioning from. So it's basically the second vector. Let's see the result. And now it has just a hint of Klimt, but if I invert the conditioning, the style becomes more important. And in fact, now it has a stronger Klimt style, but the composition is still close to the original. So let me set back the conditioning concat and try another style. Let's do Tamara de Lempicca. Or Raffaello. Yeah, this is weird. Of course, we are not limited to styles, but we can add anything. You could even randomize the second prompt to, to get unpredictable results. Let's try with angry frowning. And now she is a little less serene. 
or African American. Oh wow, this is a true goddess. An interesting alternative would be to use condition in combine instead of concat. Combine is more or less the same as putting everything in the same prompt, so we'll probably see a lot of mutation in the image because African American comes with a lot of background. Let's see. Indeed, now we get a rather different image, but with conditioning combine, we can add a conditioning set time step node that let us modulate the influence of the second prompt. So for example, I can tell to stop adding African American at 25% of the generation. Or if I want a lower impact, I can start at 0.3 and end at 1. And as you can see now, we are closer to the original image because the initial steps are the most important. So if the second prompt is not part of the generation at the beginning, the impact will be lower. And now if I run a new seed, I will get three new pictures every time, each a slightly variation of the previous that will follow the parameters that we gave in our workflow. Okay, you probably noticed that I've used the advanced case sampler. This is because I can set a start and end step and that's very important for what we are going to do next. So I'm grabbing the second generation here and using the same negative and positive. This time though I'm changing the sampler. DPM++2M plus plus is a very good sampler, it converges fast, it's stable and predictable. But for the next experiment, I need to spice the generation a little. So I'm using a not converging sampler like DPM++ to M SD GPU. The result will be of course different because of the new sampler. And let's see. Okay, that's good. Now we copy this generation and tidy up the mess a little. So in the first sampler, I'm stopping the generation at the fifth step and enabling the return with leftover noise. Now I'm making another copy, connect the first to the second, disable add noise and return noise. The second case sampler will restart the generation where the first one left it, at the fifth step. And of course we need to change the seed. Let's see how it goes. And this is basically an infinite variation machine. You just change the seed and you get as many options as you need. Of course we can do a batch of variations, I need a repeat latent batch node, set the value to like 4 and generate again. Now we have a batch of 4 images with small variations. And if I want to get closer to the original I can increase the end and start step, like so. If instead I want more variation I can lower the values. Of course, we can alter the generation even more with a dedicated prompt. Let me duplicate the second case sampler and add a new text prompt. Now I can try with purple aura or replace gold with silver. Last but not least, we can of course use IP adapter to guide the composition. And at that point, the sky is the limit. I'm adding an apply IP adapter node. For the model, we are using a basic SDXL1. We need the encoder and of course the reference image. I'll try with Botticelli's Venus. We need to lower the weight, let's say 0.25 and see how it goes. We can also try with some crazy reference like this floral decoration. Maybe we need to lower the weight now or we can even send just noise. If you want a stronger influence, you can increase the weight. Let me grab this image. I'm adding noise that always helps. And I'm also using weight type linear that gives more importance to the text prompt. And now we have a strong anime style. Okay, let's do something different now. You may need variation on an image that you haven't generated so you don't have the original workflow or even the prompt. Of course you can do image to image or in painting, but that's lame and limiting. We have a great extension called ConfUI Noise that features the unsampler node. What this does is to try to unwind the image generation. 
it removes noise until it reaches the original noise at the first step. So here I have a basic SDXL workflow and I want to modify the picture of this astronaut. Since it's SDXL, I'm increasing the resolution with an image scale by node by a factor of two, then encode and send to the unsampler. Now I need to describe the picture in the positive prompt. Photo of an astronaut woman in a spacesuit. For the sake of this demo should be enough. Then we connect positive, negative and the model. I'm setting 30 steps and DPM++ to M Kairos as sampler. Everything else should be fine. I'm connecting the latent to the K sampler. Add noise is disabled. Same 30 steps. CFG is 1 and sampler DPM++ to M again. Let's see what happens. The result is the same image as the original, or at least very close. It may seem like nothing happened, but it's actually pretty amazing. Let me show you the result of the unsampler. I'm adding a VADE code and a preview. As you can see, what we sent to the K sampler is just noise. This actually becomes the first step of the generation that happens in the K sampler. With just this one frame and a rough description, the SDXL model was able to recreate the original image. Let me increase the end at step value to 15. Now the unsampler renoised the image up to the 15th step instead of the first. Now I convert the end at step to an input and connect to start at step in the K sampler so the two are synced. If I generate now, the result is the same, but the K sampler only generated 15 frames out of 30. Let me set it back to zero. What I can do now is to change the prompt a little, like angry astronaut. At the moment, the K sampler has a CFG of one, so it has no freedom. Since I modified the prompt, I'm increasing the CFG to say two and run the generation and now she is pissed. Of course, we can do any sort of modifications like anime illustration of an astronaut woman in a spacesuit. Since the prompt is so different from the actual reference, we need to increase the CFG even more. I'll try with six. And now she is an illustration. If I want her closer to the original, I can increase the end start step to say five and I'll lower the CFG a bit. Anyway, I find this node really interesting and you should probably consider it instead of a classic image to image. Now, you'll notice that the image doesn't change much with a new seed and that's because the base noise is fixed and we used a very stable sampler. To get more variation, we can select an unpredictable sampler like DPM++ to M SDE GPU. And remember that the sampler and the scheduler need to be compatible with those selected in the unsampler. Just to show you what happens if they are not, I'm selecting exponential that doesn't go very well with Kairos. I'm also creating a batch of four to get more options. And as you can see, all we got is noise. Let me set the scheduler back to Kairos. And now I have a never-ending variations based on a reference. One last thing, since we are talking about the noise extension, sometimes you want to generate a batch of images, but with little difference from one another. So what we can do is to create a fixed base noise and use that to generate light variation over it. We need two noisy latent image nodes at 1024 by 1024 resolution. We repeat the first one four times. We set the batch size of the second to four and use different seeds. Then we merge them together with slurp latents, lower the factor to 0.1, and we inject the noise into a batch of four empty latents with an inject noise node. 
Now we need to find the right strength. This is not really an arbitrary value. Uh, you could play with it, but it's better to fit the right amount. We can do that using the get sigma node. I set the same sampler, the same number of steps, connect the model and convert the strength to an input so I can connect it to the sigma. All left to do is to send everything to the k-sampler, disable add noise and generate. If I want a new batch, I can just change the seed in the first noise generator. If the difference is too much, I can lower the factor in the slurp node. And if I want a new batch of similar images, I just change the seed in the second noise generator. I think this is a pretty cool set of nodes and they are sadly oversighted. Okay, I think we covered a lot of options to generate big and small variations over an initial image. I hope you like this format of tutorials. Let me know what you think and if you have a topic that you'd like me to cover, just drop a comment. Uh, one more thing. Maybe you've noticed the animation at the beginning of the video. It is done with stable diffusion, of course, and a new IP adapter feature that will be released soon. In my next video, I'll show you how I did it. So yeah, see you next time. Ciao.